A winter snowfall has blown into Louisville, Kentucky, and both the Cardinals and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish hope those are the winds of change. Both schools have been burned by a string of tantalizing losses, and inside the Big East Conference, they're both in trouble. Down near the bottom of the league, Louisville 2-6, and six, the Irish 1-7, and seven, both struggling just to qualify for the Big East Tournament in New York. Welcome to Freedom Hall in Louisville, everybody. Dave O'Brien alongside Coach Rick Majera. Stacey Dale Schumann joins us in just a moment. Now, Coach, looking at the matchup now, two unranked teams, both schools having a devil of a time in Big East play. Wouldn't look like a great matchup on paper, but you would disagree. It's going to be a great game. There will never be a better 1-7-2-6 conference game you'll ever see in your life for a couple of reasons. Number one, both these teams are giving a maximum effort. That's not an issue. They're unselfish in sharing the ball. Their camaraderie is terrific. What happens is a lack of execution, but you're going to see a game today that will be as hard fought as any play in the United States. That they, they both lack rebounding, so they're mirror each other, and it's going to be instant. It's going to be very consequential as to who can get the long ball and free their perimeter shooters up. A game where Hart will be very much the center of the focus. These two guys, as we look at Star Watch, have plenty of it. Chris Quinn and Taekwon Dean. Once again, these guys are almost shadow images of each other. Quinn is the better shooter, the stoic player. He's the guy who orchestrates and leads the attack. Taekwon Dean is the better penetrator of the two. A terrific post feeder to Paget and also a great driver who can get on the board in a variety of ways. Here are the lineups. Notre Dame's decided to go small to change its luck. Freshman guard Kyle McElarty, he gets the start over 6'11", Luke Zeller. Louisville needs an inside game from Palacios and Padgett in a big way. Padgett held out of Rick Pitino's practice yesterday because of a tender knee. Now let's go to Stacy on a depleted Louisville bench. Well, Dave, they will need an inside presence because just yesterday, Louisville coach Rick Pitino announced that freshman forward Terrence Williams will not start. He has been listed on academic leave, has not met the standards of Coach Patino academically. It's to be determined whether he'll play against Cincinnati on Monday. They're really going to miss, guys, his league scoring average of over nine points a game, and more importantly, his five rebounds per game. David Padgett is critical, Dave. Rebounding has been such a big question for Louisville as you get a look at the officials, and we are underway here from Freedom Hall. Louisville wins the opening tip. The Cardinals and the home whites. Notre Dame and Louisville tangling on a snowy day here in Louisville, Kentucky. I can only offer this assessment. I spent most of my college on academic leave in the union <laughs> playing cards. <laughs> Padgett bangs away quickly and gets to the 6'11 sophomore and the transfer from Kansas. Rick Pitino decided to sit him out of practice yesterday. His big guys, Palacios and Padgett, have certainly been sore. Knees and ankles and all sorts of issues. Both teams, Dave, opening up zone right now, but I love what Louisville did there, going inside on about the sixth pass to get Padgett a paint catch. They've got to color up the paint because they have the best post player by far in the game in Padgett. Quinn handling it out, the shot clock dwindling down to six. One of the great shooters in the country gives off to Colin Falls. Now back to Quinn. Shot clock at two. Will they get it off? A leader on the run, barely glancing off the rim. He did get it off in time, but it won't go for Notre Dame. The turn is shoot by Palacios. That won't go. And quickly, a whistle underneath. And we are just over a minute into the contest, and Louisville has the 2 to nothing lead. Now, remember about Notre Dame with that 1-7 record. Just a slew of tough losses. They have dropped five consecutive games, four consecutive games, by excruciating, I mean, tiny margins. 67-65 at Marquette. A double overtime loss to Georgetown, followed by a two-point loss at the hands of Villanova, and then Wednesday's one-point loss to West Virginia. Close only counts in horseshoes and at the drive-in. I never went to the drive-in much, but it counted there. Carter gives it up to McElarney. Now back to Carter. Shot clock again. Inside 10, down to five. The long-range shot will go. The three-pointer by Russell Carter, the junior from New Jersey. And he needs perimeter confidence. I'll tell you what, against West Virginia's 1-3-1, that's the, that's the strength of Notre Dame because with Falls and Quinn out there, and if Carter can become the triumphant, the three-man of it, then all of a sudden they got three long ball shooters. McGee with a miss back out to Dean. And Taekwon Dean is on the money with his first triple of the day to make it five to three. Get used to seeing that. Both of these teams will live and die beyond the arc today. They love to shoot it, Rick. Yes, they do. And get used to seeing this. No, they're going to pick up tempo and extend and press up. They're extending this defense to steals. And another one right on 
on the money. This one by Kyle McElarney, the freshman out of Staten Island, New York. A tough, hard-nosed guard with good range. And gives them their third three-ball shooter legitimately. If Carter can continue to hit that long ball against the zone, then they can spread it with four shooters around Francis. Carter tearing down a tough rebound. The building totally sold out. Some may be late arriving because of the snowy conditions. They may get an inch or two in the Louisville area as the snow started to fall early this morning. Carter up top to Falls. Louisville's seen enough of those Notre Dame threes. They're back man to man and pressing up against them, which is the way to play Notre Dame. Turn Francis with his first touch. Carter got it. And another triple for him. Russell Carter is two for two. Conference is the very lifeline of the shooter. Carter hadn't had it. Now he's hit two of them. You can just see how that'll improve him. Padgett with a running catch and shoot can't get it to go. And here come the Fighting Irish with a 9 to 5 lead. Mike Brace team, a very good start for them. Boy, do they need it. Seven losses in conference play by a combined 23 points. Quinn with a nice little fall away. And a quick timeout here as Notre Dame opens up an 11 to 5 lead. Louisville a little sleepy in the early minutes at home for Rick Pitino. You find a leave cold and sinus at the pharmacy if it's not on the shelf. They fired up Rick Pitino asking for a quick time out there and really tore into his troops when he called him into the huddle. His team two out of six. Notre Dame a quick four for five from the field. Louisville lacks a go to shooter. Dean is a very good shooter, not a great shooter. They miss O'Bannon from last year. They miss, Gar they miss Garcia. But they have Brandon Jenkins launching a three, the junior from Detroit, who hits about 44% beyond that arc. Not taking very many, but he makes them count. Went all the way through, and sweet as he please, drops in a bucket. And that was a good call by Bray at the timeout because he told his troops to look to attack the press more and not be content just to get it over half court. Too long for Daquan Dean and McElarney, who they really like a lot. Off to Quinn, he got it. I'm not sure if anyone's going to play defense here in the first half, but Notre Dame on a 13 to 3 run is shooting lights out. And they never get easy shots, Dave, but I like that three. I think that's the easiest three in the game that transition three in rhythm. A lot of people tell you it's a kick out off the offensive rebound. I like that transition three right there. And I'll tell you what, Louisville's got the tempo they want, but they haven't got the defense they want. Dean from the corner, got it. We are raining threes inside Freedom Hall. In fact, Notre Dame hasn't missed one. Here's Louisville with the press. Well, Louisville's going to keep that press on all day. They want to play fast. Notre Dame is methodically attacking the zone. McElhinney left open. Not there for him. Now Louisville to run. It's the first time the Irish have missed a three-point shot today. The swing into the corner. Jenkins off to Palacios. There's Padgett. Up top, Dean off the fake, wants to get inside. Off to Padgett, he's fouled by Cornette. Here we're gonna see Quinn and why he's so good and special. Watch him drive and attack the press and take this all away. Now we're gonna see him rhythm up for that transition three. Credit McLarney with the terrific feed. How about Quinn circling in, setting his feet? Nothing but net. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Acura RL with super handling all wheel drive. Louisville against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The Irish have really come out firing six out of eight, four out of five beyond the three point arc. Talking about this Louisville team, you know them very well. You know Rick Patino certainly very well, Rick Majerus, because you faced him you know, four or five times head to head as coaches. But what about the identity of this particular Louisville team? Lost him in five NCAA tournaments. I think he gave me a hat for that. But <laughs> in any event, here's the deal this team here is searching for identity. And the teams that I lost to, you could say it was the pressing team. With the trapping defense, you could see it was the fast break team with the long three ball. You could say it was the great overplay denial defensive team. But here we have seven new players this year, and that's the first time here in Cardinal Land since 85 86. That doesn't bode well. They missed Dean because he's their best penetrator and best post feeder to Padgett. 
So then Padgett doesn't have a guy to get on the ball. When Padgett hasn't played, Dean's playing bereft of any post presence, so they can't color up that paint with inside scores. And then in conjunction with that, Palacios has no lift and can't play through a hit down low because of his tender ankle. And then Rick kind of let the, the cow out of the barn there because he got Palacios so ingrained in that three-point shot last year. However, Garcia and O'Bannon have moved on to the NBA. Padgett will be at the line here. Well, the opposition of the Big East has chewed up both of these teams. Louisville was 13 and 2 going into the pit game back on January 15th, but they have lost five out of six since then. And we talked about Notre Dame's excruciating defeats that dropped seven out of eight, four in a row. And looking for some Irish luck as Padgett connects. See if they trap on this press. My prediction is they're going to start trapping this press pretty soon and doubling it. Chris Quinn trying to get out of the backcourt. Notre Dame clears out and doesn't give him that opportunity. Nice spacing in the full court by the Irish. Michael Arney off to Quinn. Quinn, of course, had that fantastic game against Pitt back in January, in which he dropped in 37 points. At one stretch of the game, he scored 19 straight Notre Dame points. And he plays 40 minutes. There's where falls is superb, right there. And perfect from the corner. Another three-pointer for the Fighting Irish. What's happened now is they've stretched that Louisville zone because Carter's hit those two threes, and now they have four guys out there who can hit that long ball. McGee inside of Padgett, sips it out to Dean. Got it. That's a two. Give Taekwondo Dean a two-pointer. He plays with what could be a debilitating illness that requires him to be on intravenous fluids before every game. Blocking foul there as Dean hit the deck and Stacy this is an amazing situation for Taekwondo Dean that I don't think a lot of fans are aware of outside Louisville. Dave it's really remarkable he has what's called sickle cell trait it thins out your blood and makes you very fatigued so he has to drink more fluids he drank about two gallons of Gatorade in the offseason every single day and he has to eat lots and lots of green vegetables that we all love Dave. We all do some of us eat a lot of spinach. But Taekwondo Dean has to go out and play 40 minutes at Division I. Cornette got hung up. The tip won't roll in. Two efforts for Notre Dame, but no basket. I've eaten with you too much. I know you don't like that color green. <laughs> Your burgers aren't green. No, McGee with a jump back shot. Can't get it to roll in, but a tough rebound for Dean. The miss. Padgett with a follow on a shot up around the rim, but he was Johnny on the spot for two. Rick reamed him out so much at that first time out. I'll tell you why. He's got Padgett's attention. Patino went right after him and justified and so over his sluggish first four minutes. And ever since then, he's been wanting the ball, moving it through the zone and rebounding. Turn Francis about to check in for Mike Bray as well. Bray trying to snap the first four game losing skid since he's been the coach at Notre Dame. And that's six years back, pushing foul underneath. And this is going to go against Notre Dame and Russell Carter. ESPN's coverage of college hoops continues today. Texas A&M facing number eight Texas at two o'clock. Then at later on tonight on ESPN two an SEC showdown. It's Kentucky taking on number seven Florida at nine. That's college basketball Saturday primetime coming your way this afternoon and tonight. I'll tell you what's happening now. As much as I like Dean defensively and he's a stalwart there, I don't like him getting a second foul on Quinn. Falls tried to bait one there. With ball the taking the ball indeed, and instead Louisville capitalizes and knocks down the shot to take the lead to 20 to 19. And look at the run here for Louisville up by one. And they've seen Jenkins now, their best defender, goes over to Quinn. McElhinney with a miss, a scramble, a tie up. The possession arrow will keep it on this end of the court. 12 23 to play here in the first half. Coach Rick Majerus, Dave O'Brien, Stacey Dale Schumann with you. From a sold out and ready to rock and roll Freedom Hall. Mike Bree and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish really scuffling at 10 and 9 right now. But you know, if you talk to Mike, his spirits are up. He realizes he cannot afford to lose his kids, and he is remarkably upbeat when you chat with him. He told me last night, he said, I feel like Tony Robbins going in there every day, trying to give <laughs> some motivational ploys and speeches. Said, you know, oh, Dean just got his second foul. What a disaster for Louisville here with 12 to go in the first half. Mm. Yeah, Taekwon Dean, the man they absolutely cannot afford to have sit. No, you got to have Dean in there. He's the straw that turns the drink, and he's the guy who can create his own shot that gives him great stability. Now he goes over to Quinn, where he's likely to pick up foul three. 
Francis battling in a rebounding fray. Louisville, and that's really been a sore spot on the glass. They've been out rebounded in every single game they have lost this season. Long shot by Tyquan Dean and playing with two fouls. He drains his three. Louisville with a 23 19 lead, and all of a sudden, the Cardinals have taken control of the thing. And I'll tell you what, Rick's got the heart of a gambler, and he must know Dean better than we do because he's keeping him in with those two. Curtis hands off to Chris Quinn. Quinn averaging about 23 a game in Big East play. Look at this long one. Way off the NBA three-point line. And that's what he does, and he does it over 40 minutes. He averages 39, 36 a game, and that's minutes and seconds. What a chess match going on here in terms of zones, presses, and matchups defensively when teams go man-to-man. -man. The Irish are man-to-man -man now. Harvey with it out high. Off to Jenkins. He's guarded by Falls, trying to make a move on him into the paint. Quick step knocked away by Falls. He got into the play and forced the turnover. Jenkins realized he had Falls at great disadvantage and just took him off the drive. Smart move. Quinn left open for a split second, and that's all it takes, Rick. No, I'll tell you what. That guy can shoot off the dribble, off the catch, with either hand to a middle game and take it all the way to the rim. There's very few guys. I call him J.J. Redick light, and I mean that affectionately. If Redick is 99% player, he's 96. Quinn, a 6'2 senior, a Notre Dame captain from Dublin, from Dublin, Ohio. Although it makes perfect sense, it's Dean not there this time. And Kerr's with a rebound for the Fighting Irish. We told you this would be a great game, and it certainly is. How, you look at these teams and say, how the hell are they 2-6-1-7? Two, two, Louisville, 8 out of 17, and 5 for 8 from 3. Notre Dame, 9 out of 16, 7 out of 10 from beyond that line. Finally, they go inside. Francis denied. And that's going to be an offensive foul against the Fighting Irish. 10-10 left here in the first half. It's becoming a shooting battle. Notre Dame by two over Louisville. It's a snowy day outside here in Louisville, Kentucky, but inside certainly heating up. Raining three-point shots here on ESPN. Everybody thinking Super Bowl, of course, to some degree. The big game coming up, but this is a big one for Notre Dame and Louisville. Both desperately needed. Louisville started out the season in the preseason top 10. Right now, 14 and 7. It's not even a certainty that they get to Madison Square Garden and qualify for the Big East tournament. And for Notre Dame, all of these losses, seven in conference play by a combined 23 points. I'll tell you what, though, Rick, they are shooting like they mean to play in Madison Square Garden. And that shooting begs this question. Which team is going to blink first and go almost exclusively man-to-man -man because all of them have three or four three-ball shooters on the floor right now. Harvey off to Taekwon Dean playing with two fouls. He works on Carter on the perimeter. Looking for his shot, bounces for Padgett. A scramble out of bounds, and Notre Dame will take over. And credit Quinn with that turnover just being alert. He saw the mismatch on Padgett had on the switch on the pick and then came over to help. Inside 10 minutes to play in the first half. And something in the area of 20,000 here today to watch it. Quinn with 13. Dean has 11. So that was our star watch, and they're playing like it. Quinn is such a cerebral player. And what's interesting now is Louisville has called off that press where they're actually trying to get up against him and increase tempo. They're just settling back now. Now they went from a zone to a man to man. What a nice ploy. Quinn doing it himself. Missed it with that shot clock again inside 10. That's happened on several occasions. As Notre Dame has not been able to get off a quality shot. That certainly wasn't for Chris, Chris Quinn. Mike Bray talking about the fact that his team is involved in a bit of a mini series right now. With these amazing losses. He said every game's a heartbreaker, but he said, I know this. The ratings people have to love us. Every game comes right down to the wire. And this one will be no different. Dean making his way inside. Last time, Dave Louisville did a very interesting thing. They played zone for the first part of the possession. Then when Notre Dame got the ball to the second side of the floor and sent cutters through, they matched up man-to-man. -man. Very difficult to do, and they did it well with a relatively young team. No foul here, but Louisville will have the ball as it spit out of bounds off the Fighting Irish. So the Cardinals to check in. And it's into the backcourt for Taekwon Dean. Still fighting off the effects of a high left ankle sprain he suffered in mid-January. Missed three games because of that injury. Palacios kicks out. 
And that one's going to be high off the rim, corralled by Kurz. He only measured Dean in high heart pump because that guy's that big heart. Falls with a miss. And Harvey with a big rebound for the Louisville Cardinals. Again, Terrence Williams, the freshman, unable to go today. The layup won't fall for Taekwon Dean. Five on four. Let's see if the Irish can capitalize. Terrence Williams averaging about eight points, five rebounds a game out because of academics, did not dress. Carter in and out. Boy, that was inside the cylinder. Padgett got a piece of that one, although Turn Francis will control. Falls has to hunt his shot a little bit more here against his own. He's got to realize he's the second best three point shooter on the floor. Gwynn off the back iron, a long rebound. That one comes to Harvey, and here come the Cardinals down by two. Palacio squares up off the front rim, and now suddenly both of these hot shooting teams can't hang it. And I had to laugh because Patino just turned his head, shook it, and said, but we can get that anytime. Yeah. And you're not in rhythm, and you got a bad wheel. Look at him, he's yelling at him. The Palacios, the 6'8 sophomore from Medellin, Colombia. They'd like him to be a little more of a force underneath for sure. Falls out to Carter. He was hot with the threes early on, forced that shot. Jenkins wants to run and do it all himself, and he's fouled on the play. Speaking of Carter, what a smart move it was to drive that close out when he had the mismatch of, of Padgett coming at him. That was just terrific for the freshman. Shows how much he's grown. for a Big East win, and it's a game, Rick Majerus, that may well be decided on good and bad decisions. And here we see the maturation of Carter. First of all, he recognizes the mismatch here on the closeout. He's decisive. He sees Padgett. He takes him. Two weeks ago, he would have charged in there. Now he pulls up for his middle game. He's really emerging as a smart, savvy player and learning from his mistakes. I like the growth of Carter. Jenkins at the line for Louisville. Russell Carter comes from an exceptionally athletic family. His father, Russell, played football at Pittsburgh. His cousin, Sean Redmond, football at Penn State, and his uncle, George, football at Cincinnati. Well, how this kid is becoming a wide receiver is beyond me. <laughs> That's a great point. Well, he was born in Frankfurt, Germany. Oh. And grew up in New Jersey, and we're seeing some grow up in this contest against Louisville today. Well, thank God he didn't play soccer. 25-25. You said that. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not Where the World Cup will be played later on this summer on ESPN and our family of networks. A foul out way beyond the top of the key. 7.07 left here in the first half. Jenkins picks up his first. Brandon Jenkins, the junior from Detroit, with a personal. And Colin Falls will check it in for Notre Dame here. Louisville man to man just switching defenses trying to press up against the three point shooters. Falls with Jenkins sticking right on him. Out to Zeller. Now Quinn and he has McGee all over him inside his shirt. Quinn inside the line he doesn't live very often there. Francis with it shot clock is at 11. Good defense here by Louisville looking for a stop inside McAlarney with the left handed shot. Fresh shot clock falls out to Quinn. They won't wait and he can't hit nor should they nice pass by Falls to give it the one more. Notre Dame trying to snap a string of four consecutive losses that have come by a total of eight points. And Louisville with a record of 14 and seven coming in at one point. The Cardinals were 13 and 2. That was back in mid January. Rick Pitino, who took Louisville to the Final Four last season, has to wonder what has gone wrong inside the Big East Conference since then, but they've dropped five out of six. Well, injuries, we talked about that. Youth and inexperience, how tough the Big East is. Combination of those three factors for sure. Palacios not being able to go inside and get down and dirty. And when you've got Padgett or Dino, you're losing your great inside or outside presence. And no offense to Conference USA where Louisville played last year, but you had a couple of easy spots in the road during the course of the winter. You don't get that in the Big East too often. Yeah, there's no watering holes where you're going to get relief in that in this Big East. Win up top to Falls to turn and shoot. Left it short. Tough rebound for Zeller. Boy, he really fought inside to tear that one away. Quinn to McAlarney. Open. 
And the open shots just aren't going down for the Fighting Irish here in the last five or six minutes. McElhinney's young, and your point is so well taken. But McElhinney's a little bit disarming to me because he's missing off the side of the rim. Great shooters like Quinn or Dean or Falls always miss long. You can take that any time, and other great shooters as long. McElhinney's too much side of the rim. Maybe it's because he's a freshman. Maybe it's because... He's not quite poised enough yet. First year man out of Staten Island, New York, out of Moore Catholic High on Staten Island. Scored over 2,500 career points. We've been stuck on these numbers for quite a while right now. We had a yeah. game going up. McGee trying to make a move on Quinn. Goes left. Inside. Tough shot. Won't roll in for him. And the Irish with it here. Down by two. 27 to 25. See, one thing with playing McElhinney, he plays more point and then Quinn's off the ball. Jenkins picked it. The follow and the stuff by Harvey. Jenkins is such a good defender. He's so active. He takes a lot of pride in that. He's a steel man extraordinary, and he does it with his eyes. Louisville, his eyes and his anticipation. Louisville, Rick, had gone about six and a half minutes since their last bucket. Jenkins, however, with a holding foul before that play could ever start to develop. Stops the clock with 5-10 to go in the half. Take a look at de defense on Jenkins' part right here. Watch him. Look at his eyes right there. You got to be ball strong right there. You can't be fooling around when you got a guy like Jenkins on you. Quinn's looking for a pass to the paint. He's got to break down that pressure. When they're sitting underneath your chin, you got to break it down and drive. Hey, Monday Night College Basketball's Rivalry Week tips off with a triple header on ESPN2. First at seven, these Louisville Cardinals against Cincinnati at nine. It'll be Texas taking on Bob Knight's Red Raiders. Finally at midnight Eastern, St. Mary's battles with number five, Gonzaga. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN2. Talking about players of the year, the candidates, these two guys have to be one, two, the NCAA scoring leaders, Adam Morrison and J.J. Redick. Who's your choice here, Coach? Well, my choice is Redick. If you switch to it, play how they would do on each other's teams and impact them, number one, Krzyzewski would set Redick, uh, Morrison on the bench because he doesn't defend. <laughs> now, I like Morrison. His offensive prowess and his skills are sensational, and he's an unselfish high-scoring guy, but he doesn't get down in that stance and take on that defensive challenge like Redick does on a possession-by-possession -possession basis. Quinn off to McElarney. The youngster drops it inside to Cornette. The 6'9 man has it swatted away. Louisville has played some great deny defense here in the first half. Falls got tied up in the air and he got fouled there. And finally able to swat that one away. Check this shot fake out. This is a fall special. First we see the block. Now we see great ball reversal where we change the other side of the floor. 29-25 Louisville. Notre Dame in a chilly spot here in the first half after a sizzling start. Zeller off the inbounds and Palacios raced out to guard him. And you have to, Zeller won't hesitate to pull the trigger on that three ball. That's his game, that low block. The last time Notre Dame scored a bucket, 10.52 was on the clock. And just as we speak about it, he buries it on a pick and pop. That's why when you said, and I love the way you're trying to coach now, <laughs> I had a good influence on you. You got to get out to Zeller. That's why Palacios was there. I wouldn't want to be coaching against you, but Luke Zeller, a 6'11 freshman, pretty good range. Speaking of which, McGee, Andre McGee, the freshman out of Moreno Valley, California. All these guys get to ice their arms down at halftime. <laughs> Forget about your legs. Taekwon Dean won't need the ID. He's going to need the arm ice. 32 to 28 Louisville. McElarney high. They're going to get Falls off the screen, but swings instead to Quinn. Falls with a bounce to Cornette. The 6'9 man just inserted into the game by Bree, and he's tied up underneath. Nowhere to go there. Gets it back. Say this, he's diligent. One had a foul, the other official had a traveling violation, and he will overrule there. It will be a traveling violation. Louisville with the lead, 32-28, inside four minutes at Freedom Hall. For the Blue Hearts at the University of Kentucky, before every game, we start putting on war paint and we'll kilt up, and hopefully. Correct. Thank you, guys. Yeah, the Fighting Irish seemingly cannot catch a break. Andre and McGee may be part of their problems today. The freshman for Louisville. For more on the youngster, let's go to Stacey Dale Schumann. Well, Dave, Coach Patino has to be very pleased right now because the star player for this team, Taekwondo,
Martin has been on the bench for five minutes, but this young man, Andre McGee, has been carrying the slack. Now, this is critical because they've noted here in the Louisville camp recently that this guy has hit the freshman wall. And, Rick, you mentioned legs aren't a factor right now. Well, they're a factor for this young freshman at this point in the season. But he's playing superb basketball, powerful basketball right now. And part of that is his basketball acumen. His dad played basketball at Long Beach. He did his brother Antoine also a senior at the University of Colorado also a guard McGee. Oh how about right on cue and how about his leg bend right there with Stacy prophetic or what let's go to the casino with her falls with a timeout and that's because McGee buried his three pointer to open up a 35 28 lead. Well well advised timeout here. Take a look at him. He's got Quinn there. Quinn can't believe. Now nah, that wasn't any any bit of Quinn's fault. That was Kerr's not getting out there or Zeller. They got to get out there on their man, especially when they have that height advantage in the zone. As he beats them on the zone, you know he's driving into another guy behind them. You got to get out on the zone with your height advantage when you're on the wing. Kid's got a great smile, doesn't he? And he has scored eight of the last ten points for Louisville. Well, nothing, the Cardinals up by seven. You know, I thought nothing makes you smile like the long ball. They usually don't smile defensively until they get to be seniors like Dean. He smiles and Jenkins smiles. But when you're young and you're a freshman, that three ball, somehow you're enamored with it. And with Taekwon Dean on the bench, as Stacy mentioned, playing with a couple of fouls, Louisville has still opened up their largest lead of the day. Seller off the back iron. Carter with a one-handed rebound and another chance for the Irish. He jumps in. Quinn inside the line and turns it over the palming violation. That's number four for Notre Dame here in the first half. That that has been a bugaboo for him that they seem to have ironed out. They still got to do a much better job on rebounding, which has been their other problem problem throughout the Big East Conference. David Padgett checks back in the 6'11 sophomore, the Kansas transfer who sat out last year after coming from Kansas. Averaging 12.6 rebounds. Mike's seen enough of that zone. He's going man to man here. McGee off the screen, set by Patchett, and nothing but nets. On fire. Stacy, did you call it or what? His legs are in that shot big time. Hey, Rick, and another thing about this kid, Rick Patino's really been trying to get him to be more of a passing point guard versus a scoring point guard, as you see the make there by Carter. But, guys, I think Rick will take the scoring right now. Well, he's certainly getting it from a first-year man and Andre McGee averaging five points a game coming in, but he is lighting up the Irish here in the first half, although Carter answered to quiet the crowd. Here's McGee spinning inside a Padgett for two. Well, he can do a little bit of everything as he gives up the ball as well. Keep Taekwon Dean benched. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's passing, he's scoring, and he's defending. Best of all, he's defending. There are a lot of things in Big East play. Louisville has not done well. Obviously, they are two and six inside the conference, but they do pass it very well. They are the number three assist team in the Big East right now. And here in the first half, nine assists for the Cardinals. Carter on the drive, slices in for two, and a strong move to the basket. Man, is he going to be good? And we talked about his emergence as a decision maker. He's showing a maturation now, just in the course of the last two weeks. Rhodes to pulling up for middle game draw and kick. Boy, tough catch by Padgett and got the lay in. And Padgett helps Louisville to a 42 33 lead. He has 10. He has great hands. He's got strong hands. He catches everything and he's got a pretty soft touch. Louisville bothered by a string of their own difficult losses, losing five out of the last six, but pretty crisp here. The tail end of the first half. Another strong move, though, by Russell Carter. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. He goes left, he goes right, and he finishes in traffic. But I'll tell you what's getting away from Notre Dame right now, the pace of the game. This game is now on a pace for 90, and that favors and that favors Louisville. What Coach Bray is going to have to do at halftime is get this pace slowed down and be a little bit more methodical in terms of attacking the other side. Padgett fouled as he was backing down Zeller. Four college hoops, Texas A&M facing number eight, Texas later on at two. And then tonight on ESPN2, an SEC showdown. Kentucky taking on number seven, Florida, at nine o'clock Eastern on college basketball Saturday primetime. If I put you on the spot, Coach Majerus has said, name your four final four teams right now. Would Florida be on your list? No. No, it'd be Connecticut, it would be Duke, it would be Texas, 
And then I, I maintain the fourth one right now is too difficult to call. I think it's going to be a seeding situation. It's going to be one of those where that other network that doesn't do the good job we do is going to get on and say, the Southwest Regional is a little bit weak. No, I'm just having fun there. I understand. Paget, an 81% foul shooter, helping. They don't Pacino's have Joe foul. Lenardi. I hear you. We got the bracketologist, man. 44-35, and 37 seconds left in the first half. And a strong first half for the Louisville Cardinals. Both teams in dire need of a Big East win. What's going to be equally as critical of Notre Dame scoring here is going to be the stop they've got to get on the other end. They have not closed out halves strong with a defensive presence. Falls will fire and get right it. Right now, here they got to lock in on D, belly up to the bar, and keep the ball in front of them. Well, the Irish really needed that bucket from Colin Falls. He can provide it at 44%. From beyond that arc. McGee gives it off and turns it over. Time to get up a long distance shot that will not go by Colin Falls, but he hit a big three moments ago. And I can't tell you how critical that nice stop was right there. Andre McGee, the big story for Louisville. 11 points for the freshman, three out of six from the field, and he also nailed three three point shots. Notre Dame, by the way, did not attempt a foul shot in the first half. Let's go to Stacy. Coach, Andre McGee's hit somewhat of a freshman wall of late. What do you make of his play today? Actually, he hasn't. He's played great the last six games. His assist turnover ratio is terrific. Playing great today, but this is a nightmarish team to have to guard. I mean, you, no matter what you play, they cause you difficulties. We just got to beat a more stronger offensive team. What uh, changes do you make on the perimeter with their perimeter players? Well, they'll, they'll try to go with Zella, run a pick and pop. We got to switch that and hope our big guys can contain the small guys. All right, thanks, Coach. Back to you, Dave. Stacy, Coach Patino, thank you very much. The Cardinals with a 44-38 lead at halftime. And let's head back to the studio now and join Dave Repson for the UPS Halftime Report. Dave. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by OnStar by GM. To learn more, visit OnStar.com. Man, if you like your three-pointers, you like this one. Notre Dame 10 out of 20 in the first half from beyond the arc. Louisville 8 out of 13. Louisville has gotten a slight better of it. 44-38 as we get ready for the second half. Dave O'Brien, Coach Rick Majerus, Stacy Dale Schumann with you. Do you expect that three-point accuracy to continue? Yeah, not only from beyond the arc, out of the area, code. I mean, as you've talked on many occasions, these are long ball NBA threes that we're seeing right here. It's going to be who goes to man-to-man -to -man and can get a hand up on a shooter versus three. Take a look at Carter right here on the three ball on the in-out game. He spots up, kicks out again. That in-out is one of the most effective ways to get that three ball shot. Now we're gonna look at McGee, the freshman. He pops that one versus his own. Now it gets man to man. He changes pace and comes behind for the handoff. And I might add, he's doing a nice job defensively as well. So in Star Wars, we profiled Chris Quinn and Taekwon Dean. They were hot early, then cooled. And Andre McGee and Russell Carter joined them in the spotlight. The catch by Padgett. She is harassed and fouled on the play. In the opening seconds of the second half, we check out the first half numbers. You see the three-point shooting very much in evidence, but take a look at Notre Dame without even attempting a foul shot in the first half. And Louisville hit all eight of theirs. Well, when Carter hit those first two three balls, they decided they're going to go outside. They haven't had the turnovers, which has been very good. As you had said, they, they've got to get something off the glass and a kick out three off the glass. And just six turnovers combined. McElarney launches and gets it. First three-pointer of the second half of the Irish by the youngster from Staten Island, New York. So critical for his mindset. Only having made one three ball in the first half, he was one for five. Louisville only turned it over twice in the first half. That's three for the game. As Patino's team quickly turns it over. McGee steps out. Patino continues to coach away on the youngster. And Stacy, I know you talked with Mike Bray at halftime to the Notre Dame head coach. Yeah, I did, Dave. He said offensively they did a really good job getting shots. They just didn't make them. He said he really liked Carter's presence inside without the presence of a big man. Defensively, though, they're going to play more man-to-man -man defense, and they want to make them put the ball on the floor more. They certainly weren't expecting McGee to light him up, Dave. 
Quinn's pass. That's out of bounds. It'll go over to Louisville. Five turnovers for the Fighting Irish. And just as we talked to Burrell about a relatively free turnover first half, we've had mm. two successive phantom passes here. Mike Bree was right there at the side of Coach Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. He was an eight-year assistant for Coach K. Dean with a miss. The rebound tipped out to McGee. Nice dish inside to Palacios. He will be going to the line. And talking with Mike in his locker room before the game, he said, you remember that time because of his back situation that Mike Krzyzewski had to leave the Duke Blue Devils for a while. He said, that's kind of the crisis situation I find myself in now trying to manage the psyches of this Notre Dame team because of this slew of very difficult losses. And he's done a good job with that because you and I have been to the practices and I'll tell you what, they're upbeat, they're organized, there's no feeling sorry for themselves. He also told us he's going to have the team over for a big Super Bowl party because he said this. He said, I want to know that I've got their bats covered and I want to deflect any any criticism and heat. I like that about him. He's a stand up guy. Palacio smooth at the line. 46 41 Cardinals and they are 10 for 10 from the strike. Dean playing Quinn with two fouls but trying to extend pick up point and pressure. Dean bumping with him, got it off to Carter, dangerous out there, gets another one, a three-pointer for Russell Carter, trying to be the difference maker today for the snake-bitten fighting Irish. Well, he certainly has been that. It's been him and McGee who have been the stars. We had star watching, it should have been those two. He has 16, Palacios, the inside pass from Dean, nicely done as it falls. For Juan Diego Teo Palacios. Boy, that rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? I can tell that you want to, re re I mean, uh, broadcast that soccer. You can't wait to get those <laughs> Spanish. I, I just love on. the name. I mean, that's, I want a name like that. <laughs> that's a beauty. 48 44. McElarney off the falls deep in the corner. Turn Francis, not much of a factor in this one, but backs in and knocks it off the glass for two. Good job. You can't go inside enough. They're in man to man now, both clubs. Dean forcing the tempo with a scoop shot. Padgett there for the rebound, and he's fouled on the play by Francis. Turn Francis averaging nine and a half rebounds a game. He doesn't want the ball enough. Here he does a great job. He plays slow, he stays lower in leverage, he gets his head around on his shot. He could be a good player. Sometimes they neglect to go to him in there, but part of it is his fault. He's part culprit because he doesn't want the ball enough. The critical element for the post player is wanting the ball. So David Padgett certainly wanting it. And he goes to the line here. Sometimes you can want it a little too much as Chad Miller checks in for Rick Pitino. Not inside, I disagree with you on that. You can't get that ball inside enough. You've got to color that paint up because you want to get to the free throw line. Well, my point was going to be he suffered a couple of broken noses, a oh. broken foot in September. <laughs> Maybe you might want to think about jumping outside where it's not uh, such hairy going, but well, your point I, is well taken. He's a man they need to get the ball to on the low block. Quinn with a pull-up pop, and it glances off the rim. It's Dean with a rebound. He wants to run. Now you're sounding like a soccer mom when you're worried about those broken <laughs> noses and stuff. Padgett with a miss. Your boy's a wrestler, isn't he? he? Sure is. I can guarantee you, you're not worried about him getting hurt. No, sir. And he said he, what you're so proud of him as well. You should be. You said he's a terrific competitor. Louisville with a four point lead here. Just about three minutes into the second half. Coach Rick Majerus, Dave O'Brien, Stacy Dale Schumann with you from a sold out Freedom Hall here in Louisville, Kentucky, with a little gentle snow falling outside. And the best thing Notre Dame has done in these first three minutes is get the tempo back under control. At the end of the half, it was going to an 80, 90 point game. If it's in that area, Notre Dame's going to lose it. Falls takes the handoff. He'll launch it. Got it. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Versus Louisville's best defender, Jenkins. Colin Falls, the junior from Park Ridge, Illinois. Another long range shooter for the Fighting Irish. They love to live beyond that arc, don't they? Yeah, they do. Taekwondo Dean with a baseline move. Outside to Jenkins. Millard with a rebound. Immediately back to Jenkins. Weaving outside Dean. Off the fake and a foul by Quinn as he caught him with the shoulder. Talking about Padgett a moment ago. David Padgett, the big fella from Reno, Nevada. Stacy. Well, Dave, just take a look at his body. He's put on 15 pounds in the offseason. Of course, he's only a sophomore, guys, but he's a captain of this team. Incredible leadership role. One of the reasons he came was to play an up-temple style after transferring from Kansas, guys. 15 cut pounds, I might add. Look at the definition of his upper arm. Fake by Dean. Found the three-point line and rattled it in. And once again, we talk about the value or advantage.
advantage of the in out three. Going into the paint, collapsing the D, kicking it out. Taekwon Dean with 14 points. McGee all over Quinn. His pass is off the knee. McElhinney racing into the backcourt to pick it up. And it will be an over and back. Good call by the ref. Ray's wrong on this one. The ref was right on top of that call. So the turnover by Notre Dame gives it over to the Cardinals, who are a preseason top 10 in both of the polls. Louisville has tumbled to 14 and 7, 2 and 6 in their first year in the Big East. The effort expended here is not indicative of 1 7, 2 6 conference play. It's indicative of how great and how strong the Big East is. Taekwon Dean, long one, got it! The hand up to a shooter's face does nothing. You gotta get the hand up perpendicular, not in the face. Shooters like the hand up in their face. Foul of 15, 47 remaining in the game, and Louisville's lead up to seven here in the second half. Take a look at Dean set himself here and the confidence with which he shoots it. Rhythms up, comes around, classic stroke, and that's for a guy who can make any play in the room he wants. Well, thank you, Dave. And here in Louisville, Kentucky, we are running out of room to tack on more three-point shots the way both sides are shooting it beyond that arc. Let's go inside the play. Here we take a look at him attacking the zone and watch him go for the in-out three. They take it, turn it, stop it. Now you see him turn right here. This sucks in the zone right here. Good spacing by Dean. He shot fakes it. Now watch him kick it out. And that's what spacing, shot fake, and moving the ball in the in-out game does. It collapses the zone, enables you to get the easy step in three. Notre Dame for the first time all day going to the foul line here as Carter hits it. Russell Carter with another one coming. Louisville is 12 for 12 from the charity strike. The lead at six for the Cardinals. Russell Carter, the junior. I grade Carter's game out at an A plus right now in every aspect of play. Every aspect of play. Well, he's had a terrific day with 18 points. He's chipped in with three rebounds as well. And played excellent defense. And he came in averaging nine points and five rebounds. Palacios on the high post. Palacios may have lost too much weight. I'm sorry. You think he has? I, I, he looks like it to me. Of course, I don't know much about weight loss. <laughs> Patch, <laughs> Padgett with a miss. There's a guy who's put on size and pounds, as you mentioned. And quality weight, good weight. Cut definition weight. Kerr's with it. Palacios coming out to guard him. And it Kerr's off to Carter. They said they'd switch on to Kerr's. The, the, the mismatch doesn't beat you. The open shot beats you. And Kurz is a three ball shooter. They want to make him dribble to a shot. Look at that shot clock now at six and a foul as it stopped at six seconds on the reach in. Such a smart move. That's what I call European on the screen. The Europeans do a terrific job of splitting that screen and seeing a seam. And that's what Quinn does because he's such a, a student of the game. So Andre McGee picks up the reach in foul. And Brad Giannini checks in, a junior from Alpharetta, Georgia. His father, Fred, played basketball and baseball in North Carolina. Falls with a shot, but foul instead. 14 49 remaining here in the second half. We're getting Louisville into some foul trouble. The Cards have four right now. Harvey with the foul for the Cardinals, and Carter to check it in for Notre Dame. And another quick whistle. Well, the whistles are piling up here. We didn't have a whole lot of fouls, a whole lot of stoppages in play in the first half. It was pretty crisp. Only six turnovers by the two squads combined. Patino knows it's a foul. He doesn't even flinch. He grabbed him. There's Harvey again. He got two fouls in about six seconds. Up top, it's Quinn. They find the open man so well, and he buries the three. Chris Quinn, who came in averaging 18 points a game. He plays virtually every minute. He's averaging very close to 40 minutes a contest. And I'll tell you what, they're all played at a maximum effort. Harvey off to Taekwon Dean. Right by Quinn, laid it up, it rolled off the iron. He's got the Dame making a little bit of a run here, Rick. There within two. 
And another quick foul. This one will go against the Irish and Kurz. Look at ball movement here for Notre Dame. Four guys are going to touch this ball. One, two, baseline drive and drift. The end one pass. Spotting up for the shot. What I like best there is how he ran in the rebound. Notre Dame has got to get some kind of paint presence over here. If, if they can't get it off post ups, they got to get it off the rebound. Patch it off to Harvey and now take one Dean. We told you this is going to be a terrific game, and I want to tell you it is. Well, the officiating is really tightened up here. The foul is Gween. Uh, should say Taekwon Dean got hit. 13.54 left. And that personal on Russell Carter. Both teams are in route to an early bonus situation. Six for the Irish, five for the Cards. And both sides have still connected on more three-point shots the two point shots and man all of a sudden the referees have taken over the game and they call the foul here before the ball was even inbounded there's a, it was a grab the jersey call oh. this is going to put Notre Dame into the bonus this foul and so Palacios will be going to the line so man a flurry of whistles here in the last three or four minutes I think we've had six calls fall in a minute and a half. I think that's well, it certainly feels like it is Palacios is in and out of the free throw and Cornette grabs the rebound for the Irish and none of these are killer fouls. I mean they're, they're, they're touch fouls or grab the shirt foul. You know and I didn't think the first half was overly physical at all. There was so much perimeter play and jump shooting. There wasn't a whole lot going on underneath the basket. So it's not like the officials had to change some stuff falls with a miss. Giannini out to Taekwon Dean. Harvey back to Taekwon Dean. Denied well by Carter, who can play some defense. But it's a fall away, not there for Taekwon. Give it to him inside. Falls outside. Now in the paint. Kurz had his man in his back down there and was calling for the ball. They need to get it inside. They don't even look inside sometimes. They're so taken up with the three ball. 13 minutes left here from Freedom Hall in Louisville. Chris Quinn weaving in. Now the kick out. Carter. Crowd wanted a walk as he tried to find the three point line to shoot it. Shot clock is at two. That barely glanced off the iron by Quinn. Great defense by Louisville. Oh, I thought he had a travel right there, Dean, but he's smart enough to let that ball bounce and recruit. And no call inside. He goes. Palacios is hammered. Juan Palacios to shoot. Monday night college basketball's rivalry week kicks off a triple header. It's Louisville and Cincinnati first then at nine Texas taking on Bob Knight's Red Raiders finally at midnight Eastern it's St. Mary's against number five Gonzaga big Monday presented by Bud Light part of rivalry week. It's presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN 2 Texas has every component you'd want if you were designing a college basketball team. They got Gibson a great scoring two guard Tucker a terrific scoring three man who can post up and who can take you off the dribble and shoot the three ball. I love Buckman. There's no better role player particularly at the four with the physical presence and Aldridge is long shot blocking runner who can score inside moving Gibson off to the two guard has been the secret for the Longhorn success offensively falls corrals the rebound here for the Irish down by three and Notre Dame just looking to get some of that Irish luck back on their side they have been desperate for a win in the Big East losing seven times by 23 total points and one and seven in the conference turn Francis backing down there's Zeller straight on it's in and out for him. Jenkins pushing tempo here for the Cardinals. That long shot is Zeller's strength. Yeah, despite his size at 6'11. The freshman missed there. Palacios. That's a shot, as you pointed out early, coach. He can get anytime he wants. You know, his ankle is bad. It's off balance. He doesn't go up with balance, nor does he come down with it. You can tell he's tender on it. McElhaney bottled up, but they do get it outside for falls. Neither side shooting the ball nearly as well here in the second half as they did in the first when they sizzled particularly in the first 12 minutes of the game. You had a great observation last night when we were talking. You know, the fast break nowadays is not so much about the layup, it's about the three ball. And both these teams have done a nice job of getting out to the three ball in transition. 
Dean can't get it. Rebound tipped by Palacios to Jenkins. Palacios wants it again. And again, he can't get it to go. It's Dean with another effort here for the Cardinals. His ankle's got his body balance messed up. And Louisville takes a timeout to save possession here, leading by three. Saquon Dean bonded by an angle sprain, but fighting on, and his Cardinals lead the Irish by three. Oh, yeah. Hi, right, Dave, thank you very much. Notre Dame has hit 14 three pointers today. They hit another one. They'll tie this one up against Louisville, 57 54, the Cardinals in front. And the Notre Dame school record for made threes, incidentally, is 17. So they are clearly within that range. Taekwon Dean off the inbounds, got tied up in the air. The follow won't go, and now it finally will as Farley gets it to go after a tough fight underneath that rim. And part of the reason why they got those 14 threes is they're exclusively to a three-guard open style. And McElarney on the point, Quinnen falls on the wing, playing all small in the perimeter because they feel that's their best way with Carter to four to generate points. Francis. Nice call of the timeout yeah. by Braves. And found Chris Quinn on the cut. Nifty pass there from Turn Francis. So the senior finding the senior for a bucket. Good execution. See Quinn with 18 points. That is right at his season average. Two terrific coaches. Each guy had a timeout remedy. Patino got that ball inside right where he wanted it. And that's why these guys are coaching where they are. We've got a break here with 10:26 remaining at Freedom Hall, and Louisville's lead still at three over Notre Dame. Louisville 59, Notre Dame 56, and as we check out the bottom of the Big East standings, that's where you're going to find both of these teams really scrapping just to get to Madison Square Garden and qualification rig for the Big East tournament later. Well, they're not only missing from NCAA tournament bracket projections, they're also missing from the bubble, both these teams. Louisville has one win against the top 60 RPI club. That's the win against Cincinnati. Too many home losses. And uh, in the past, Rick's teams have been superb in terms of genuine stunning upsets, not this team. But the fight is in both these clubs. What effort they've given today, huh? Yep. I mean, for teams that are two and six and one and seven, they're sharing the ball. They have good team chemistry, and their effort is superb. Jaron Francis with the catch in the lane, left it short. Rebound, Kerr's fights, and a foul will go against Louisville. Of course, the bottom four teams in the Big East Conference will not qualify for the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. The top 12 have their tickets punched for New York. Juan Palacios with the foul. As Padgett continues to sit, Kerr's at the line here for the Irish. 6'9 sophomore out of the state of Pennsylvania, averaging about six points, four rebounds. Although enjoyed a very solid effort against Georgetown and another rough loss by the Irish. He scored 14 and yanked down seven rebounds. Now subbing Carter to get more athleticism, putting McCarney on the bench, McElhaney on the bench. I have trouble with those Irish names, Nestor Guinness. 59-57. <laughs> Notre Dame, incidentally, has not led since they were on top 25 to 23 in the first half. Padgett has left the bench now. He's getting ready to check in for Rick Patino. Jenkins, quick move to the middle. Nice dish and a foul. Farley going up strong, and he'll be going to the line. Looked like a convoluted box of one move. Here we're going to see a nice pass right here. And shot fake gives him dribble penetration. Great job by Jenkins. I love the way he laid that ball up high. You always want to pass higher near the rim and with a soft touch. Farley short on the first one. Two point lead here for the Cardinals. Playing today with Padgett coming off the bench here in a moment, but playing without forward Terrence Williams. Eight points, five rebounds. He's out of the game, held out, suspended for today because of academics. And what they missed there is his shooting. He's an excellent outside shooter. So nine and a half minutes remaining. And another hard-fought close game. The Irish and the Cardinals have played a ton of them already. Kerr's with a miss. Francis kicks out. 
Long shot, Quinn and three. And the Notre Dame Fighting Irish battle back to take the lead for the first time since the game was about nine minutes old. And that's the one of the three easy threes in the game. The kick out off the offensive rebound. It's a Duke staple and specialty. Notre Dame did it just as well. Tyquan Dean to Jenkins on the wing. He loves this move, slashing inside. Notre Dame's in a triangle in two days. And Notre Dame has the ball and the lead here with 8.45 left. We'll see if they come back to it again this time. Can the Irish hang on to a lead and win a close game that has burned them all season long? The inability to win the close ones, and they played a ton of them. Inside, Francis. Kicked, and that's going to be Notre Dame ball with 8.28 to go inside Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. And both the Cardinals and the Irish desperately need a win inside the Big East. Louisville is 2-6 and six in the conference. Notre Dame just 1-7. Dave O'Brien, Rick Majerus, Stacey Dale Schumann alongside, along with 19,327 fans. You look at all the tough, tough losses, just brutally tough losses for Notre Dame to make them 1-7 in the Big East. And now we got Dean holding falls his jersey grabbing him and those are the kind of calls we've had your point was so well taken to me earlier in the half saying the referees have sort of disrupted the floor of the game but nevertheless these jersey grabs you've got to pay attention to legitimate fouls yeah I think we're all for those if it's a foul it's a foul but there was a nice crisp pace to the yeah. first half and the opening minutes of the second half a couple of turnovers but then the whistle started blowing like crazy and really disrupted it. Yeah, and, and as you had said, if, if in fact they are the jersey grab, we want to call that. He's got some blood on his shirt right now. And Taekwon Dean being brought over to his bench for some treatment, an official timeout. I'd like, a blood, line. I'd like in a blood transfusion to get the blood out of this guy's heart. I'll tell you that right now. This guy's a real warrior, Dean. He's, he told Stacy he was 85%. Uh, you know, he's hurt. He doesn't have another senior to really play alongside of. Yeah, guys, if you take a look at Dean, he's got a sling on his elbow. He's got a sling on his knee. He's got that left ankle from that high ankle sprain wrapped up. And now he's got some blood on his jersey. But he said, guys, sitting out approximately two weeks really brought passion back to the game as a senior. He's putting too much pressure on himself. Now he's enjoying it again, but not so much with the blood, guys. Well, he missed three games recently with that ankle injury. And yet in those three games, to your point, Rick, he shot 50%, 52% from three, and he averaged over 17 points a game while playing injured. 62-59, now he has to play injured the rest of the day. Cut. And this looks like something out of the ring in Vegas, doesn't it? Well, yes, it does. And then here's the foul, and maybe we can bring it back up. But you talked about this foul here, and this is the one I agree with Jan. There's Rick. He needs water. He needs to hydrate along with Dean. I'll tell you that right now. A lot of touchy fouls, though, here in the second half. 62 to 59. And speaking of that, the cards are now on the double bonus. You know, it's 10 for the Irish. So Jenkins with a second shot coming. Here we see a dribble weave. Uh, you know, I, that was to me. That's a no call. To me, he didn't put it. It was, thank God he didn't call it on the screener. But to me, Carter just got stood up. It was a great screen and was going to try to fight over it. And we call that quick whistle on Carter. That's the foul you're talking about. And my guess is Taekwondo Dean will answer the bell. Timeout here with 8.18 remaining. Notre Dame leading by one, and the Irish take a timeout. We've got Big Monday coming your way as Rivalry Week tips off a triple header. First at seven, Louisville and Cincinnati. Then at nine, Texas and Texas Tech. The last game in a dandy St. Mary's against Gonzaga. First, Adam Morrison, if you've not yet seen the Player of the Year candidate, Larry Bird like offensive skills. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN2. And when you say something like that about Morrison, and you and I saw him at the beginning of the season in Maui, where he just carved up one team after another, nobody's saying he's Larry Bird, but he has a lot of bird-like skills. Yes, he does. He reminded me a little bit of Brian Winters, but he is better offensively than Winters. His test of time is going to come when he makes his next jump to the NBA and, and having to defend on the floor. And I recognize that having been Keith Van Horn's coach. We would not have had the success we had without Van Horn's offensive prowess. 
I always struggle and fail Keith as a good coach defensively. Uh, Morrison has got to make that jump up on the defensive end of the floor. Taekwon Dean wants to check in and will in a moment here. A cut underneath the eye has been treated. In my estimation, Dave, Reddick is Duke's best perimeter defender. He might not get the steals and deflection Nelson gets. He might not be as exciting as Dockery, but for consistency and for rotations, I, I, that's one of the things that really appeals to me about Reddick. McElarney looking for a shooter, finds Carter. He's certainly been that guy. Gets it back with four to shoot. Looking to get some room on his fall away. Got it! That's a two-pointer. Great call by you. He drove that mismatch back, dribble it, and got space to a shot. You won't see them done any better in the NBA anywhere tonight. And a career-high 20 for Russell Carter for Notre Dame. Gosh, what a great game and what a terrific effort these guys are expending. McGee zips the pass to Padgett. Back and down, and he's held with 7.25 left. Here we're going to see Carter right here, and you're going to catch him on the wing as he recognizes the mismatch. You want to be taking the mismatch, back dribbles it, gets separation in space, as Davis said. Bam, nothing but the back of the rim where all good shooters put it. And then Padgett to shoot, the 6'11 sophomore, who's an 81% foul shooter. And pretty smooth there. He reminds me of Davis at Michigan State. There's another guy. Davis is almost 90%. These big guys have done a one, great job of, of following through and letting their weight come forward on the shot. Padgett had a lot of that weight working the right way against Connecticut, didn't he? 27 points and eight rebounds. UConn with a hands full today against Indiana. It's going to be an all-big least player the last two years he's here. It won't happen for him this year. And he'll have an NBA. He'll be a career NBA player by virtue of his body size and heart. Transferred from Kansas. Notre Dame with the ball here. And a slim one-point lead. Quinn leading the way with 21 points. That's just two away from his Big East average. His fall away. Rebounded by Jenkins. The Cardinals pushing tempo. Dean gives it off. Nice defensive transition by Notre Dame. They communicate so well in defensive transition. McGee tried to reverse and turn Francis got his hand on it, blocked the shot. Just being alert. Nice block by Francis there. And he does what good shot blockers do, keeps it in play so they get the rebound. Francis, two-time Irish co-captain out of Boston with Patino's old stomping grounds. Notre Dame trying to enlarge. I like Carter just taking this kid. Pulled up his dribble instead. Quinn inside to Francis. Leaned to the basket and missed it. And a foul as Falls went tumbling out of bounds. And picks up the person with 6.20 to go. What a terrific play by Padgett to recover there. Take a look at Padgett. He gets out in the passing lane and then he comes back. That's what you want to do. You want to play defense in multiples of twos and threes. That was just sensational defense by Padgett. To contest the pass and then to recover to get a hand up on the shot. And another one of those fouls. It's number three on falls that you wonder about, but a one point lead for the Irish. Paget at the line again. Praised recently by Coach Patino, and Rick at times has been pretty tough on Paget. Sandy plays softer than he should inside. The Patrick was put on, Stacy, as you mentioned earlier, that extra size and muscle putting it to work here today. Well, he's definitely putting it to work, but he's also putting leadership to work. Again, he is only a sophomore, a captain on this team. Rick Pitino told him well before the season, you need to be a leader on the floor with Taekwondo Dean, and he's doing it today. Notre Dame with the ball here in a tie game. It's 64 after the Padgett foul shot. This press is so critical because McElarney can't bring it up against Dean. That's a turnover waiting to happen, in my opinion. The reach in foul by Padgett, and he didn't think so as he jumped over the back of Kerr's and picks up his third foul. Well, let me tell you why that's called because refs call big arm movements. And although that could have very well been a deflection, we'll take a look at it right now. It looks like a foul. See that right there? It really wasn't. Great call by you, Dave. There is body separation, but it's a big arm movement. Oh, that's good defense. Excellent defense. But hey, these guys are human. There's three of them. They see that big arm, that big ham hot coming across there, and then they, they get a little bit anticipatory, too. So Kurz to shoot. Rob Kurz drops in the first. Look at Padgett's reaction on the foul call on him. 
I don't blame him. You can't play backwards, son, because there's going to be another possession. And once again, this game is going right down to the wire. We call it up front and on top. It is a terrific game. Kurz makes them both, and Notre Dame's lead is two. Mike Bray has to be thinking, here we go again. Another game where there's absolutely no breathing room, and it may come down to a final shot. Boxing one on Dean. They've got McElarney playing Dean man to man. They're in a 2 2 zone. Boxing one. Long shot. Got it. Andre McGee, who exploded in the first half, the freshman for Rick Patino, puts the Cardinals back in front. The kind of day he's had, you might have wanted to put the box on him, but I want to tell you, you're going to the guy, Dean, who's their heart and soul. McElarney to Carter. Rebounded by Dean off his shoulder, a lucky bounce. It came right to McGee, who has 14. He came in averaging five. His quick spin move and it spits away from him. Can't get a better shot than that. He makes the classic freshman mistake of over penetration with nowhere to go. Notre Dame, eight of nine losses by six or less. All seven losses inside the Big East have been tough to take. The last four in a row have come by a combined total of eight points. Look at the intensity on absolutely every cutter is contested. Balls are being denied. Kerr's in a charge. Notre Dame gives up the ball. Padgett taking the charge in the lane. I thought it was too deep in the lane. This is where I like the NBA charge circle. Let's see how deep he is. See, he's inside what would have been that NBA cone there. That has taken away shot blocking in the NBA. But nevertheless, I don't like that call that deep under the rim. I like it as a non call. So Kurz picks up his fourth. He has to step out. You can't fault the kid's presence of mind to get there, though. You've got to applaud his rotation and his ability to want to take that hit. Back and forth we go between Louisville and Notre Dame here as we come down the stretch at Freedom Hall. Now it's all man to man for the Irish. Padgett faces the basket. His hook shot. Good. What a beautiful move. Turn and face, perimeter sweep and drive back to a hook. 19 for Padgett. And here comes Louisville's newest best friend, 18,000 people at Freedom Hall, who had been dormant until now. Quinn or Carter really needs to answer here. Carter had a shot and passed it up. He's got the best mismatch on the floor. Timeout Notre Dame. Good call by Coach Bray. Not to wait for the TV timeout, I love it. And with 14 on the shot clock. We talked about all of those close, excruciating losses for the Irish. Go back to January 20 in Marquette. Steve Novak hitting the late jumper for a 67-65 Marquette win. Go to January 28th now. Notre Dame at home. And yet that was not good enough as they fell on the late tip-in by Kyle Lowry. 72 to 70. Nova escapes with the win. And then just this past Wednesday at West Virginia, down one. Chris Quinn missing the last second shot. A shot he demanded inside the huddle, and West Virginia escapes with a 71 70 win. And one thing applicable to all those situations, you cannot question the coaching decision nor the player's execution, I might add. I don't know if there is such a thing as being snake bitten, but there is a thing called talent where when you have dominant players to make those kinds of plays, Quinn's just a little bit short and a little bit light. Francis off the inbounds. Quinn will shoot that. Got it! But big heart, how about him moving without the ball, changing pace and wanting to take it? Little inside, outside, to tie it at 69. Quinn with 24 points. And they're going right to Padgett. He jumps and hooks again. Oh, my God, what a beautiful go to move. Padgett's in suffering a broken bone in his foot in September and a sprained MCL in November has been hampered by injuries. But he's come up huge today for Louisville. They got McGee on Quinn. Jenkins is told to make four dribble to a shot. Francis weaving in. Picked off by Padgett. A strong rebound right over the top. Louisville leads by two. Short. You got to get the ball up high. Dean. Pass deflected. Nearly stolen away. How about Padgett hitting the deck to save it right into the corner well, he's to Taekwon Dean. He's playing like that captain Stacy told him. And that, that Rick Pitino told he wanted him to be. Indeed, David Padgett, he has 21 points as well. 
Stop here is imperative for the Irish. Jenkins, shot clock at four. Up in the air. And two for Brandon Jenkins. The least likely suspect. The defensive stopper goes on the offense. The Cardinals press again. Inside three minutes, a four-point lead for Louisville. What's Jenkins and Falls? There's going to be some kind of call there. Jenkins is really trying to get physical with it. Falls oh, pushes it. Oh, no, three-point shot. That's not called. What a play by Falls. 73-72 as he drains the three. And here I don't understand this. See, they're worried about telling the kids to sit down. Let them be kids. That's what I always loved about the Carolina bench. Take a look. Take a look at Falls here, moving out the ball, setting up his shot. Jenkins had been talking some jump to him. Watch him move without the ball. If that's not a foul, I don't know what is. Okay, what we're going to see here is we're going to see Falls being governed by Louisville's best defender, Jenkins. And you watch him right here. You're going to take a look at these two coming up the court right now. It's Jenkins and Falls. There, Jenkins gives him a bump. He's going to hit him again here, gives him a shoulder, a little forearm block by each other. Watch him change pace, change direction here. Watch him set his man up. Nice pick by Carter. Big shot by Falls, and he should have got the four-point play. The referee, as Dave mentioned to me during the break, they called the a tic-tac foul and not that clubbing. Well, it's certainly been a trend in the second half. Falls with 14. Notre Dame, incidentally, has hit 17 of 33 three-pointers. They have tied a school record for three-pointers made. There's Taekwon Dean with a miss. Rebound tipped to the corner, and a wrap-up foul by Rob Kurz. He's all over Brandon Jenkins for the personal 221 left. A very ill-advised, foolish foul right there. They did a good job coming out of the timeout, changing defenses, going to a zone. They got a hand up on Dean's shot. And then he, you know, Bray's got the patience of Job. I love his coaching temperament. I think I'd be right on this guy right now. Kurz fouls out. Rob Kurz is gone. And Jenkins will be at the line. Palacios about to come in for Rick Patino here. 221 left. And Louisville clinging to a one-point advantage. And they're trying to ice Jenkins here without a timeout, but that was why they changed that rule where you had to put him in within 20 seconds, which was a very good rule change by Hank Nichols and company, or whoever the committee was that formulated that. Kyle Mack, Delarney coming into the ball game as well for Notre Dame. And Jenkins at the line. Makes it a two-point lead for Louisville. 12 and 3 here at Freedom Hall for Rick Patino this season. Who would have thought he'd have been the best three point shooter at 44%, yet 68% from the line? But he looks smooth on both of them. Takes him like a winner. He's a terrific defender. This is going to be tough for McElhinney right here. With Taekwon Dean guarding him. McElhinney with a reach in there by Taekwon Dean to foul him with 2.12 left. They have to wonder, does it help or hurt the Fighting Irish to have been in so many close games, Rick? Well, Father Thice, when the team priest is going to earn his money here because they got to get some mojo working for him. One thing I like about Notre Dame, they haven't played games or the season backwards. They still continue to come out with fight. Oh, the freshman with ice water in his veins. And I'll tell you what, he did a wonderful job of not getting sped up by Dean. There's the father right there. You know, we saw Krzyzewski go to the Rosary the other night. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> I did. Against BC. <laughs> I did. Right here, I hope he's got his beads going for the Irish sake. Father Mark Thiesing. And, and meanwhile, Father Bradley, who's always on Father Ed Bradley, who's always on Rick Petito's bench, has left at the half. I'm not sure what that means. We may find out later who has the higher authority today. Oh, nifty steal by Carter just reaching up and plucking it away for the Irish. And that is seven turnovers for Both Louisville. great coaches. Both teams play their heart out. This could just as easily be a first place game with the effort expended and how well it's been played. Absolutely right. Carter tries to hand off the falls. Out of bounds off Louisville, and they say absolutely off Brandon Jenkins' hands, although the crowd begs to differ. Over 19,000. Oh, and what? 
I think Kitsch had it called the other way and it's been overrided, I believe. Francis will step out for Notre Dame. No, nope, Notre Dame is going to keep possession here. Good sub on offense and defense by Bray here because Cornette is the better low block player and, and Francis was the better defender as evidenced by that block a minute and a half ago. And one of the great shooters in the country with a two-point shot from the corner. They give him two, but Notre Dame takes a one-point lead. You know, probably take a timeout here. Mm. Yes, he does. He does take the timeout. What a game. What drama right here. And Notre Dame yet again. In a game that comes right down to the final seconds, it's been the story of their season. Louisville trying to win at home here, but down a point with 125 remaining. Let's go back to that call on the out of bounds moments ago on which Notre Dame had possession. Take a look. Ooh, it looked like it bounced off Falls' foot. Sure did. And the referee closest to us. That referee closest to us overrided Kitts, who had the best view. Kitts was the ref on the baseline. I think he saw it go off the thigh of Falls. Here we'll take one more look at it. Yeah, no question about it. That should have been Louisville's ball. Yeah, Brandon Jenkins said the same <laughs> yeah. thing. In no uncertain terms. He called it right. Mm. <laughs> Louisville with it, but down a point to the Irish. McGee to Palacios in the high post. He steps out. He'll shoot it. Short. Out of bounds. It'll stay right here on this end of the fresh shot clock at a minute nine left. Tender ankle, no knee bend, no lift. He, he can't sustain that pain. The kid's doing a good job just hanging in the game here. Coming up on one minute remaining. Palacios, it rattles in from this time. This one he said it. He knocks it down. Louisville by one less than a minute to play 77 76. Well, it's probably going to Quinn, but Falls has been very aggressive. Timeout Notre Dame. He's going to substitute and go small here. Matt Malarney's on the way in. He's going to put four small, four ball, four smalls in the game. He wants the three ball shooters in, spread the floor, and make sure that they don't pack the lane on a drive. Notre Dame with a timeout. Let's take you now to the TGIF game track. Notre Dame with 17 three point field goals made that ties a school record. Quinn with 26. He's nailed half a dozen. Louisville also lighting it up from beyond the three point line. Tyquan Dean, despite the sore ankle and the cut under the eye, 17 points for the Louisville star. Now let's go back to Louisville's last basket at Juan Palacios. Who doesn't mind shooting out there, the 6 8 forward, but he drained that bucket to put Louisville in front by one. They know where the soft spot of this zone is. There's Palacios right there, and he gets that knee bend and balance off that bad wheel to get it in. We saw the blood earlier from Toy Condine. You know, it's a shame. With 52 seconds left, we're going to see the tears of one of these two teams because this is a blood, sweat, and tears game. Coming up next, Texas A&M and number eight, Texas. And as soon as we finish up here from Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the Fighting Irish, Rick, are bereft of timeouts. They have no timeouts remaining. The possession arrow does belong to the Irish, and Louisville has two timeouts. Well, they have four three-ball shooters on the floor with McElarney, the freshman in. They have their best offensive rebounder, in my opinion, Coronet. And he's also a low block guy that can score. In this situation, watch a tip on a missed shot. Carter on the drive by Palacios inside, and he's fouled by Padgett with 41 seconds to go. Great recognition by Bray as well as the Notre Dame team to get the ball to Palacios. That's the best mismatch on the floor, and he drives it right there. Here we see him just taking him. It's like his feet are in cement. Padgett comes to help. He should have gotten there with his body. Patrick was too high up the lane when there's a non-shooter like Cornette in the game. He should have just camped out under the rim. And Carter with the first free throw ties it at 77. Now substituting offensively and defensively here. Francis is the best defender, defensive rebounder. And Cornette steps out for the Irish. 
Russell Carter with 21 points today came in averaging nine a contest makes them both and Notre Dame has the lead again 78 77 six seven differential between the shot clock and game clock that's critical Patino does have a timeout to call if he likes it but doesn't want to let him change defenses this is why Patino is an outstanding coach he, they've seen a little box of one a couple triangles and twos Jenkins handles at the foul line he's got the mismatch he drives a mismatch it spits out to Dean. He launches way short. Notre Dame with the rebound. 11 seconds left and a foul. With the Fighting Irish clinging to a one point lead, 78 to 77 at Freedom Hall. And credit Bray's astute substitution there because we said they wanted Francis in for the block shot, the defense, and the rebound, which is what he lends to him. There he does a great job. Look at him hustle. What a good, great hand up there by Carter. Dean took a wonderful shot. Oh, what a game. The crowd here at Freedom Hall, 19,300 plus. A little bit stunned at the moment. Timeout. And here's why he's taking this timeout now. He wants to ice the shooter. That's hard to do with Quinn. And secondly, he's calling the play. But it'll be interesting to see if they junk it up. I think if I was Louisville, I may go back to a triangle and two and, and, and put that baby on Dean and take the young freshman out of there who's done such a great job today, McGee. And take my chances with Palacios outside. But Jenkins has proved he can knock it down too. We well, talked about what's on the line here today. Both Notre Dame and Louisville struggling so mightily inside the Big East Conference. Remember, the bottom four do not even go to the Big East Tournament at Madison Square Garden. And you look down to the bottom of those standings, you see Louisville there at two and six, Notre Dame one and seven. Who'd have ever thunk it, huh? Louisville started out the season in the top 10 in both of the preseason polls. But Notre Dame with seven losses in the Big East by a combined total of 23 points. The question today is, despite this being Louisville's home court, will the luck of the Irish find Notre Dame at last? Texas A&M and number eight Texas is coming up next. That'll be a 205 tip. Well, it might work for Coach K. And Coach K brought the rosary beats out against BC. If he's got any, he should bring them out. Hopefully, Father Theismann's over there on the bench. Tell you, what a shame someone's got to lose this game. What an extraordinarily well coached game by both Patino and Bray. And what a terrific effort by everyone who played in the game. And I'm not just saying that. That really comes from my heart because the energy expended here. Well, it's Chris Quinn, an 85.5% foul shooter. His second one good. And Notre Dame's lead is three. No icing that boy. McGee with it. Seven seconds left. Down to three. It's Taekwon Dean to tie. Got it! He got it! What a play! He tied it and we're going to overtime! Pageant, other than Patino, is the only guy on the team that just realized the score is only tied. These other guys played it the most as though they thought they were going to win. What a beautiful call by Patino. He went with a double down, got the ball to his star, and had him come out and set a moving screen, not an illegal screen. Look at him get out there. What a shot. Handled well by both clubs, both sides of the ball. Gets a hand up on a shooter. That's just Dean being the great player that he is. If we're gonna miss our flights, take a look at this bench here. And a reaction on the Notre Dame bench. We've been down this road before. Oh my God. Mm. And Taekwon Dean setting this crowd into delirium with a three pointer just in front of the buzzer to tie it at 80. That's regulation. And now it's on to overtime. Chris Murphy, number 24, on the Notre Dame bench, pulled his jersey up there. He saw him over his face. He couldn't bear to watch. Dean with 20 points, six out of 11 from three point distance. 
Five minutes up on the clock as we go to OT. Notre Dame 80, Louisville 80. The only thing I would have done differently if I was Bray, I would have gone all small because two points are inconsequential. And there's that bugaboo there where every night you see someone hit that shot at five seconds or less. I, I, I'm, I never used to play this way. My pride got in my way. I would now fall if I come back and coach again under five. Every night you see this on Sports Center, and you'll see it tonight, front and center. So 40 minutes, not enough to decide it here at Freedom Hall in Kentucky. We go to overtime and tied at 80 apiece. I would love to hear what's going on inside Mike Ray's huddle right now because every game has been like this virtually all season. I can tell you exactly who's talking. Don't play the game backwards. You guys did a good job defensively. We got five more minutes to play here. Compose yourself, and we're going to go right back and make sure that we get a hand up on their shooters. We get back in transition. Well, Bree has said, I try and keep it loose and crack a joke once in a while because my kids get so tight in these situations because the result has gone against us so many times. Says I got to get guys like Chris Quinn and Colin Falls who are so serious all the time. Got to get them laughing a little in those huddles. Here's Francis backing inside. He draws contact in the opening seconds of overtime. He does not play through a hit well. He's got to get that ball higher on the glass. Never up, never in. He does a great job of posting up. He stays low there, but watch. He's always kind of short-armed it right there. You want to get that ball high on the board. Never up, never in. Francis, the Irish co-captain, averaging 12 points and nine and a half rebounds per game. A marketing major at Notre Dame's College of Business, but he's had a day without many good results. Only two points so far. Cornette going in for him now. When they come down the floor the next time, they might want to think about Carter taking that drive mismatch against Padgett outside. Stacy had talked about that outside matchup to me during the breaks of Padgett playing someone, and that's very astute observation. But then again, she's a terrific player. Texas, Texas A&M still to come. So stay right where you are here on ESPN. Taekwondine to Padgett. Padgett. He's hit a couple of nifty looking hook shots here in the late stages. Palacios inside. Missed from close range. It comes right out to Jenkins though. Long rebound, one of Jenkins' specialties. Palacios corner. Got it. That's a three for Juan Palacios. Nice execution in terms of ball movement there. At 6'8", he can shoot up and over the top despite the fact that his legs have really hampered him because of injuries. <laughs> no need for that foul that far out. Timeout by McGee well away from the basket. Back to Juan Palacios and his corner jumper. Watch him spot up now. He's going to understand he's got to get that knee bend. He's got to play through the pain of that ankle. That knee bend correlates to shots, sh the shot going down for him. It's hard sometimes to push yourself there when you know as soon as you flex it, you're going to get that great tenderness and that rush of pain shooting through your leg. Win just about automatic at the line. Made a couple of huge foul shots to put Notre Dame up three in the final seconds of regulation. It's 29 today. But then Taekwon Dean, right before the buzzer of regulation, hit a three pointer to tie the game and force overtime. This foul against the Irish. That'll go against Quinn here with 354 left in the OT. These consecutive fouls, one by each team, are fouls you do not want to have. So they're good calls by the ref. They're not ticky tack fouls. They are foolish or advised fouls given the score and time right here. And that score is 83 82 Louisville with 354 left in OT. That foul actually on Turn Francis, and he just fouled out as he picks number five up here in the overtime. And with just three points, although he chipped in with 10 rebounds, he had a very strong day on the glass. But they would like to get 12 to 15 from Turn Francis. It didn't happen today. In my opinion, they're better off going small anyway because Palacios doesn't go inside. Carter can take him outside. And actually, you know, the, the big thing in basketball that people don't realize, who's covering me, who's covering my teammates, who am I, who are my teammates, so I play to the mismatch within the context of the offense we're using. Padgett with a miss. 
They'll shoot again, a one-point lead for Louisville. Why is that when we break on guys foul shooting, and not only us, that we see him come up and miss? 81% coming into this game, he's missed two critical ones. I like to think it has nothing to do with us, but right, I, I wonder about that. 84-82 pressure here by the Cardinals. Quinn will walk it up. Padgett with 22, and he's 10 out of 12 at that line. McElhinney, the freshman, getting a lot of key minutes today. Colin Falls trying to make a move. Shot clock at 10. Carter. Coronet in the paint. Swoops it up and a miss. No one to go to the offensive glass. And for Notre Dame, that was a long way to go deep into the shot clock to get nothing. They got it where they wanted it. It's very difficult to be a great post player. Reaching out, Carter knocks it into the backcourt, but Taekwondo Dean will take it for the Cardinals. There's the shot clock at 11. Padgett gives off to Jenkins, working around Coronet. Into the corner, it's McGee. Tipped up and in by Padgett, high over that iron. They twitched too much and got the mismatch. The mismatch hurt him on the re offensive rebound. Carter denied on the baseline. Padgett, 24 big points today for Louisville. The Cardinals lead on the home court by four with two and a half minutes to go in overtime. Well, you know, Quinn wants it, and Carter's got the heart to take it. Off Louisville. I saw Kitts get right down there, the referee, to make the call. Well, ref game again today, in spite of a couple mistakes. I mean, for the most part, they've done a good job. They, it, you, all you want is consistency. When they were calling those ticky tack balls, you had mentioned the start of the half, they called them for both teams. That's all you want. Falls jumps up on the inbounds. Not a lot of time to get off a shot here. McElhinney off to Quinn. Quinn working off a screen by Coronet. Three to shoot. The leaner off the back of the rim. Yeah, that, that was a shot he missed against West Virginia, and he shot it well. You can't get a better shot than that. That's his shot, and that's the man you want shooting. Louisville, and this is rare for the Cardinals, winning the battle on the glass today. Huge reason they lead by four in overtime. Taekwon Dean. And that'll go back over to Notre Dame. Taekwon Dean, who nailed the shot in the final moments of regulation as time expired to send this game to overtime with a three-pointer and not at the score at 80. I love this substitution. Zeller, who's a three-ball shooter, to space the floor, draw pads it out, and create more room to the rim. And now they have a... They, what, what happened there? Oh. They're just spotting it differently. Yep, changed the spot for Colin Falls. And the clock's been going out while that's happening. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to reset this. 86-82 Louisville in overtime. They better look at our monitors. They ran off some critical seconds. God knows Notre Dame situation as well as Louisville's, but particularly so Notre Dame's speaks to how every second counts. So here's a look. See 145 and, and that clock just continued to run. So they're going to go back to 145, resetting the clock here. Let's go back to the key play in this contest. We talked about it a moment ago. Taekwon Dean with his three-point heroics. Padgett sets the pick. Dean gets it. I'll tell you what, it couldn't have been defended any well. You want to switch. Watch 24. He buries his head there. I mean, they all just look shell-shocked. I mean, they're just, it's like beyond belief. And Murphy couldn't even bear to watch. And Mike Gray probably couldn't either. It's happened so many times to the Fighting Irish this season. And that's why they are 10 and 9 and 1 and 7 in the Big East. Losing 7 out of 8. Last 4 by scores of 67 65. And a double OT loss to Georgetown. A two point defeat at the hands of Villanova. And then they lost last Wednesday 71 70 at West Virginia. As much as anything, Notre Dame, the tail of the tape today could be Notre Dame with seven second chance points. And we've got Louisville with 25, 25. 
Louisville leading by four. Notre Dame with the ball here. Quinn jumps it in. Same shot he missed before. That's why it's a good shot. Nice call by Coach Bray out of the timeout. Quinn with 31 points. Timeout, Cardinals. Look says, I'm going to take a timeout of my own. I executed that play at the end of the game so well. That play at the end of the game where they had that double down screen off a cross pick. You had to navigate four players setting picks for Dean for that game winner. And I'll tell you what, you're going to see that ball coming right back to Dean again. And there could be four more picks coming up right here for the man with the blood on his shirt early. Dave, thank you very much. But Dandy here as well. Overtime, Louisville leading 86-84 with a minute 22 left. Paget and Taekwon Dean have come up huge for the Cardinals. Dean with his shot in the fading seconds of regulation to send it to overtime. And Paget's just been a man inside for Louisville. Quinn and Falls, 44 and 43 minutes to date, respectively, here, too. Their legs are propelled by their hearts. Taekwon Dean trying to force it, missed it short. Rebound tip once, twice. Cornet tried to save it and did to Carter. Terrific job by Rick Cornet to keep it in. Under a minute left now in OT. Carter on Palacios went right by him. That's your mismatch right there, and they handled it beautifully. You can't get enough of that right now because Palacio has no chance of coming on the perimeter. We talked about that and so that's, often. That's someday for Russell Carter, huh? 24 points for a kid who averages nine per game. And, and 24 as he lets the game come to him. Dean working on Cornette. Give it to Padgett. Look at that mismatch right there. He's demanding Look at the Quinn ball. coming to help, though. Jenkins didn't give it to him. Instead, goes Airborne and banks it in. And the reason he did is Quinn was coming to help, but what a nice decision by Jenkins. 88 86, Louisville. 18 seconds left in overtime. And Bray takes the timeout here. Notre Dame with a timeout to set up a play. As we look back at the last couple of key baskets on each side. And Carter recognizes a mismatch here. Palacios plays to his right hand. He just takes him left. He owns him all day long out there on the perimeter. And now we take a look at Jenkins right here. Nice move. And the reason he didn't throw the ball inside to the mismatch pageant on the block is Quinn was coming on that help side, camped in the lane behind him. A good decision not to pass the mismatch and a great execution of the drive into traffic by Jenkins. Well, we've hit it a lot today. The fact that the Fighting Irish, with a slew of brutally tough losses, have fallen to one and seven in the Big East. And seemingly every game that Mike Bray has to coach in comes down to a last second shot. And they've been going against the Irish. You have to give the Cardinals of Rick Pitino tremendous credit, though, for coming up with that big shot off the hand of Taekwon Dean at the end of regulation. And here's what's at stake is both of them are near the bottom of the Big East standings right now. Two and six for Louisville, one and seven for Notre Dame. This game has been coached and played with NCAA Sweet 16 tournament intensity. Quinn into the backcourt. Hands off to Falls with a turn and shoots. It comes right to Jenkins. He's fouled. Eight and a half seconds left. I thought Quinn tied him up, and Quinn did too. I don't know if that was a foul. I like that right there because it had been Quinn, Quinn, and more Quinn. Falls did a good job to get open. I think he got a pretty good space on this shot. We'll see it right now. Hand off. Look at Falls get the separation. Great shooter. Nah. Is that our buddy Jenkins that does such a good job? The number was obscured for me. But what a nice job they did of switching out and getting a hand up on him. Well, Jenkins with 13 points, nine rebounds, and he's six for six at the line before that miss. But a little bit of hope here now for Notre Dame. Eight and a half seconds left. A lot of hope, Dave, because a three ball could tie or win it. Once again, Zeller comes in, so they got five three point shooters on the floor. If he makes this one, the mismatch on Carter won't do any good for his drive. Notre Dame out of timeouts. 
Louisville takes one here with 8.5 left in overtime. A three point lead for the Cardinals. And Coach Majerus, a terrific game. We talked about it at the top of the show. You have two teams unranked, really scrapping near the bottom of the conference. Forget about all that. It's been a tremendous game. Now let's talk strategy. Who gets the ball for the Fighting Irish here? Well, it's going to go to Quinn or Colin Falls, but well, they're facing the floor with five three point shooters. Here's the deal normally you'd take a two and fall into a three, but right now with only 8.5 seconds left, you've got to have a three because they won't be able to get another shot if they don't. So this has absolutely got to be a three. I would spread the floor and go to some kind of play action ball pick for the three. Let's see what they do. It's easy to coach here, isn't it? Falls is going to inbound, and it's Quinn with it. He has to hustle it up. Could it be anybody else? Quinn oh. fires it up. No whistle on the play. 0.8 seconds remaining in overtime. And the Louisville Cardinals begin to celebrate. And another heartbreak, it would appear, for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Quinn guarded closely and from beyond the three-point arc, not even close. Fedham with a good defensive job here by who else but Taekwon Dean. He could not have defended that any better. And the Notre Dame bench. Oh, so many times can't bear to watch. Another miss, though, for McGee here. Problems create opportunities, and life is about dealing with adversity. I will guarantee you this. Notre Dame will have a terrific practice. They'll go to Braves House for Super Bowl Sunday, and they'll come back and fight again another day because these kids have too much heart and too much class. Credit the Cardinals with hanging tough. What a great game. Well, the buzzer sounded, and nobody touched the ball after it came off the rim, so there has to be time left. They have to reset it here to point eight because nobody touched it. Falls let it drop right in front of him. Great call by you, Dave. You watch as it spits out, and Falls says, I'm not going to touch it, not yet, and the clock had expired. They've got to reset to point eight here, and there's still a little shred of life and they're going to inbound it here now and they don't necessarily have to have a tip for it to count so if they had that old hubie brown home run play that you saw stanford the other night execute so well to hernandez they got a chance to win this is washington stanford revisited hernandez